Technique number 14 in the Kippo Karate for Christ third brown curriculum is for a right front kick, and this one is defensive cross. Uh, defensive cross what is going to show up also in long four. Um, there will be one less step when we do it in long four, and that's the very, very initial step here, because in the uh, actual self-defense technique as they kick, we're going to take two steps back. It'll go back to the left and back with the right as everything happens. Uh, in the form, you'll only step back with the right, and you'll pass off to the left there. So it assumes the step back with the left has already happened there when we do it in the form uh, for long form four. Um, but defensive cross, uh, as we practice in the technique, um, when they throw the kick, we're stepping back to the left, and we're using that high cross arm that we've used um, several times to intercept either a fist or to intercept uh, even a club attack here. This high cross arm is going to go low this time. We're going to use a low cross arm block. All right? So right foot's forward, right hand's on top again. If left foot's forward, left hand be on top. But stepping back to the left, my right side's forward, right hand's on top. And again, with that cross arm block, I'm not going to stop his foot as that foot comes in to do the front kick here. We should be intercepting it. As soon as it makes contact in that cross position between my wrists here, this section between my wrists, as soon as it makes contact with his leg, we want to use friction to draw his foot past us this way. Much like uh, we've used it with uh, deflecting hammer way back in yellow belt, now we're passing it off to this side using both hands. So as the kick comes in, we intercept with the cross arm, catching the foot and passing it by. Do not open your fingers and hook their hand. This is a bad habit, and you will at some point get your fingers kicked and broken. Fingers closed into a fist. Right? As we cross, we use friction, friction between the wrists, to pull their leg by. And that way, no broken fingers. So kick comes in, catch and pass it by. Now we're going to step. As soon as we pass the by, step back because we're drawing them in pretty seriously, catching them and pulling them right into your space. So you have to get out of that space or they're going to crash into you. We'll pull them into your space and take a second step back. With that second step back, we're going to unwind. We're all twisted up here. Unwind with kind of a hanging punch back fist here, attacking towards the temple, um, which will be the best target that you have as you jerk them forward. They've done the kick and whoa, it's been pulled forward here. So as this comes out, that should be making contact right about there. To the temple, it's going to pull through like a hanging punch would. And then we're going to heel palm, assuming that temple shot does its job, brings them down a little bit. The heel palm can either hit to the nose or if it's bent them forward, which is what the technique assumes happens here, we're going to hit the back of the head with this downward heel palm. So it goes back fist, and so again hammering, back fist, followed by downward heel palm. There, to the back of the head, or can be to the nose if it needs to. From here, boom, we bend them down. We're going to front kick. If they're bent over, that can be to the head. Again, if this hits to the nose, it may have just knocked them back. That front kick will go to the stomach, and that will bend them forward. So if they're already bent forward, great. Kick comes up. That can go between their legs. That could kick uh, more like a shin kick to the face because they're that close. Um, but if they're not bent over, if this hit temple, this hit the nose, and that's more driving them back away from you, the front kick to the stomach will bend them over now. And as they come down, we're going to come up with a lifting back fist right to the chin. So as they're bending into that from that last move, we're hitting up into the chin. Or if they're already bent over, we're coming up against the nose. And in that case, we'll check behind the head. That's what's assumed when we do it in the form. It assumes that they bend over. This hits the back of the head. Front kick is deep there. Boom. can be between their legs or like a shin kick coming up into the face. And this lifting back fist is to the nose because they're already bent down. But it doesn't have to be that way. This technique has um, enough mobility, enough flexibility that um, it can work here if that response of the opponent isn't exactly like the classic... Uh, perfect um, response is intended to be. It will still work. So even if this pulls them out, that back fist there hits the temple, but that drives them back a little, so this hits the bridge of the nose. Now they're really kind of driving them back rather than bending them down. That front kick will bend them down, and we lift up to hit the chin. Or we drag them forward, pulling them into our space. We hit to the temple. This, as they bend forward, hits behind the head and really bends them down. This kicks deep 
and then comes up and hits the bridge of the nose. From there, we full cover out. The movement doesn't change. The targets adjust ever so slightly. So again, that's defensive cross. Step back to the left, right, right on, on top. Cross arm intercepts and passes that leg. As you step back at the right, hammering back fist, hammering heel palm, front kick with the right, lifting back fist, and then full cover out to 6 o'clock. One more time for a right front kick defensive cross. 